I played Assassin's Creed Mirage on the PS4 base model. And here are my thoughts. To summarize everything, the game runs fine, at a steady 30 FPS, but obviously it doesn't look as good as the next gen version. There are washed out textures everywhere, but hey, it's functional and you can enjoy the game on PS4 too. Loading times are long, especially when you start the game and when you fast travel. It took my PS4 1 minute and 43 seconds to get from the main menu into the game. That's almost 2 minutes of waiting just to get into the game. But once you get into it, you barely encounter any other loading screens. Unless you fast travel. Then you will have to wait. On base PS4, which is the worst performing version of PS4, I had no performance issues. No lag, no stutter. And I finished the game on the console and even got this weird armor. So I haven't just tested the version, I played it thoroughly. Okay, now let me tell you my thoughts on the game Mirage, not on how it performs on PS4. The game is great. At the start of the game I thought that it would have many stereotypical moments and that the story would be washed out, but it wasn't. The more I progressed, the more the game grew on me. And in my opinion the ending is amazing. It has some nice story twists. Also Animus moments are almost non-existent. And the alien subplot that you get with Assassin's Creed games comes only by the very end of the game. The new guard AI is neat, enemies can spot you in more complex ways. Also, this time the game feels more organic and less of an RPG. It's awesome how Basim grows stronger the more you advance in the story. At first he gasps as, and isn't as agile, but as you advance in the game, he gets to do more acrobatics, becomes faster and more agile, and all of this without needing you to upgrade or level up like in previous games. No, this game is focused on you being an assassin, not a warrior. Ubisoft lowered the RPG elements from previous iterations. Here you don't level up. You do progress in the ranks of the hidden ones, but those aren't levels, they are just titles. And even when it comes to equipment, it's not like in previous games that you have damage points. No, this game is focused on you being stealthy. Armor doesn't have stats. Weapon, armor and everything on you focuses on you being an assassin. Every item has abilities that suits an assassin. And with materials you can upgrade to the next tiers. But you don't get stats, you just get different abilities. Also about abilities, in the previous iterations you had some special warrior-like abilities. This time, since the game focuses on you being an assassin, instead of a bunch of abilities you get only one. You can assassinate multiple targets like you see now in the video. The ability is pretty cool. I didn't felt the need for more, but this is subjective. The game doesn't have everything you could see in previous games, for example you don't get to sail either. But you don't feel the need for that. The whole game is tailored towards you being an assassin. I think that I repeated that a lot in this review. And it does the job incredibly well. And even if it doesn't check all the boxes of what we've got in previous games, you still get a lot to do. You can break into places for treasures, go for treasure hunts, collect books, shards, pages, there are side quests. The game offers a lot. Even if you don't get the huge checklist of things you could do in the previous 3 installments, you still get a lot of content. We truly have been spoiled by Ubisoft with this amazing games. Though I'd wish they wouldn't return to past flaws if they already fixed them before. For example when climbing, it is unclear what you can climb and what you cannot. Same problem as in the first Assassin's Creed games. You can easily fall after struggling to climb something. The character is too magnetic and jumps off way too easily. In my opinion the map lacks many points you can climb onto. The game also feels nostalgic and in some ways like a transformation of the first games into modern ones. You can see similar mechanics used in the first games like for example ripping posters to lower your notoriety and as for historical accuracy the franchise does wonders again.
For example, when I visited the Nestorian monastery, I saw monks and nuns sleeping in the same room. I thought, wait a minute, but nuns and monks don't live in the same place. I found some articles on the subject that say that this is actually plausible. We don't have any solid proof that this was the case, but it is plausible. Mixed congregations were a thing. They existed but monks and nuns couldn't live in the same building. So, I, I still say good job Ubisoft, even if this cannot be proven to be accurate, it's still an interesting suggestion that can lead to some fruitful debates. I'm no expert in every aspect of the society of 9th century Iraq, but from what I know, it seems pretty accurate to me. Of course, there are mishaps, just like the first game had and every other Assassin's Creed game had, every game has historical mishaps. But for the most part, it's pretty accurate, or at least at the first glance in the 18 hours plus I've played, it seemed pretty accurate. Especially for a game. And I like the suggestions and theories the game launches. I love that. It makes you think and makes you curious to read more on the subject. Or at least that's the effect Assassin's Creed has on me. You can see the attention to detail and effort put into this game. Even if previous games have been better, I admit, I still consider Mirage a masterpiece. Ubisoft has spoiled us with so many amazing Assassin's Creed games. I'm a huge fan of this series. What sold me was the attention to historical detail and the fun it provides. So, if you're like me, you will love the game, even on the worst looking, washed out PS4 version.